Cell division and differentiation are discussed in the screencast. These topics can be found in Chapter 3 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. Explain why cellular reproduction is important. Briefly describe interphase mitosis and cytokinesis. Compare apoptosis and necrosis. Compare totipotent, pluripotent, and multipotent stem cells. And explain why some tissues and organs recover from damage easily while others recover poorly, if at all. Let's now talk about why cell reproduction is important. Well, first, in order for growth and development to occur, body parts have to grow and change form. This requires the formation of new cells. Second, from time to time, cells and tissues are destroyed due to injury, trauma, toxins, some factor that causes cells to die an unnatural death, which is known as necrosis. In order for the repair of damaged tissue to occur, new cells have to be formed to replace those cells that were destroyed. Third, all cells have a life cycle. Some cells live for years, perhaps a lifetime, other cells only live for a few days. So cells of the body constantly have to be replaced. Cellular reproduction produces the new cells to replace those cells that died naturally through a process called apoptosis. To clarify, Apoptosis is the natural, orderly process of cell death. The cell cycle describes the steps in the life of a cell. It consists of interphase and the mitotic phase. This figure from your book illustrates the life cycle of a cell. Notice that for most of the cell's life cycle, it is in interphase. In this phase, the cell is growing, it's performing whatever function the cell is designed to perform. It may be accumulating resources in preparation for cell division, but it's not actively dividing nuclear material or the cytoplasm. Then at some point, the cell receives some chemical cue in the form of a hormone that tells the cell that it's time to prepare for division. At that point, the cell enters the mitotic stage or mitosis where the nuclear material that replicated during interphase is segregated into two new nuclei in preparation for the division of the cytoplasm, which is cytokinesis. Now, I want to be clear, because we are covering mitosis and cytokinesis in depth in lab, you are not responsible for the details of these processes in lecture. Even though they are in your textbook, I am not going to hold you responsible, and nor am I going to test you on the details of these processes in lecture. I want you to understand the importance of mitosis and the importance of cytokinesis and the importance of cell reproduction in general, but again, I am not going to ask you details on the various stages of mitosis and on cytokinesis. One of the basic principles of biology is that cells arise from other cells. Every cell that exists in your body today came from another cell. A stem cell is an unspecialized cell. This cell is capable of reproducing more stem cells or changing or differentiating into more specialized cell. The fertilized female egg is, as your book depicts it, the granddaddy of all stem cells, because that one single cell 
gives rise to all of the sales of the body, more than 200 different types of sales. That one single sale gives rise to trillions of sales. Stem cells are classified according to their ability to form other types of cells. For example, totipotent stem cells can give rise to an entire organism or to any type of cell in the body. That fertilized ovum is a totipotent stem cell. Pluripotent stem cells can give rise to any type of tissue, but not to an entire organism. Multipotent cells are stem cells that can produce only a limited number of cell types. Examples of multipotent stem cells include mesenchymal cells and hematopoietic stem cells. Let's look at a figure from your book to further explain the different classes of stem cells. So a fertilized egg, known as a zygote, and the first eight cells that it forms are known as totipotent stem cells. Any of these cells could give rise to an entire human organism. Totipotent stem cells can form additional totipotent stem cells or differentiate and become more specialized to form pluripotent stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells have the ability to produce any tissue of the body, but not an entire organism. Pluripotent stem cells can produce additional pluripotent stem cells, or they can further differentiate into multipotent stem cells, such as hematopoietic stem cells, shown on the left, or mesenchymal stem cells, which are shown on the right. Hematopoietic stem cells can differentiate and form any of the cells of the blood. White blood cells, red blood cells, as well as platelet forming cells. Mesenchymal stem cells can form muscles, ligaments, tendons, and fat cells. These working cells of the blood and bone and muscle often cannot divide or have the very limited ability to divide. Some stem cells persist on into adulthood. Tissues which contain cells that don't live very long, such as your skin and the lining of your digestive tract, have large quantities of stem cells. This large quantity of stem cells allows for the formation of new cells when the old cells die. Consequently, those tissues that have large quantities of stem cells regenerate quite well. When your epidermis of your skin is destroyed, when you burn the inner lining of your mouth, those tissues repair and regenerate fairly quickly and fairly well because they have large quantities of stem cells to form cells to replace those that were destroyed. At the other opposite end of the spectrum are tissues that regenerate poorly because they have very few stem cells. For example, skeletal muscles and nerves were designed to have cells that basically last a lifetime. Therefore, they have very few stem cells and those tissues regenerate very poorly. For the most part, if a nerve cell is destroyed, a neuron specifically, or if a skeletal muscle cell is destroyed, it's pretty much gone for good and is not replaced. Then you have some tissues that sort of sit in between the regenerate well and regenerate poorly uh, ends of the spectrum. They regenerate moderately because they have a moderate number of stem cells, such as the liver and the kidneys. Tissues there were designed to 
replace sales only in frequently. Given the power of stem cells to differentiate into all of the tissues of the body, there's a lot of interest in using stem cells for scientific and therapeutic processes. Uh, as you know, there is a lot of controversy associated with the use of stem cells uh, for scientific and therapeutic uh, means. Uh, there are serious legal and moral issues that have to be tackled. It is not my desire as your instructor for this course to take a position one way or another, but just to provide you, the student, with information on which you can base your own educated opinion. Stem cells have already been used to treat cancer, spinal cord injuries, as well as nervous system diseases, and there is a lot of promise uh, in the future for the use of stem cells to treat many diseases that currently plague mankind. So let's review the objectives of this screencast. Explain why cellular reproduction is important. Briefly describe interphase mitosis and cytokinesis. Compare apoptosis and necrosis. Compare totipotent, pluripotent, and multipotent stem cells. Explain why some tissues and organs recover from damage easily, while others recover poorly, if at all. The topic of the next screencast will be DNA and cell specialization.